Now, ladies and gentlemen, well, I'd like to start by introducing myself. My name is Wang Yao. I'm an undergraduate at Renmin University of China. The paper I will be presenting today is titled Research on the Application and the Criticism of Hypotheses of Rational Man. What I would like to do today is to give you the essential background information on the, um, on the topic I chose for this thesis. I have divided my presentation up into four parts. In the first part, I give a few basic definitions. Um, in the next section, I will explain what attracts me most um, in the field uh, of the hypothesis of rational man. Um, in part three, um, I'm going to show the development of, uh, and application of hypothesis of rational man in conjunction with Chinese and Western economic, um, economics um, in the last part. Um, I would like to give a few examples in different schools to illustrate why the hypothesis has constantly been questioned and improved. Now let us turn to point one. As you all may well know, the basic um, characteristic of the hypothesis of rational man is that everyone who engages in economic activities is selfish, mm. which will explain the behavior of people who engage in economic activities, always, always trying to obtain the maximum economic benefits at their own minimum economic cost. But this is only from a narrow point of view. From a broader point of view, this hypothesis is also applicable to people's non-economic behavior and the behavior of animals as well as plants in nature. Um, we will go into more details on that later. For instance, according to Friedman, it seems that the leaves of a tree deliberately position themselves to maximize, um, to maximize the amount of sunlight they receive. Um, well, these findings have also aroused my deeper interest. Now, let us move on to the second part, which is the hypothesis is not perfect. In fact, its criticism has never ceased since its inception. According to this hypothesis, can we say that um, the choice of the working class forced to work intensively? Um, under the capitalist, um, um, for, no, for no time, under the capitalist mode of production is voluntary. Are all human behaviors rational? All the people in real life have other spiritual needs besides the pursuit of economic benefits. Um, I know that the research on the hypothesis of rational man has been vast. But for those who uh, want to understand this hypothesis, and there may be a lack of studies that can combine the economics of Eastern and Western countries. And at the same time, from the perspectives of sociology, evolutionary economics, as well as the economics of happiness 
and another field to discuss the development, application, and criticism of the hypothesis of rational. And um, that's the reason why I choose this theme. Now let us look at the part three, um, which is the development and application of hypotheses of rationale. And in the history of dissemination and development of the rationale thought, Chinese and Western scholars continued to promote its perfection. Um, an example of this is Benson, who put forward the human nature of going after profit and avoiding harm, and the idea of utilitarianism, and a confound another uh, scholars such as Jin Tonghe and Chin Huali, uh, who contributed to the same study. What really interests me is that the hypothesis of rational man is perhaps the most effective and successful tool for explaining human behavior. Um, it's possible to find the prisoner's dilemma being used in trials of joint crimes and in the design of public management. Um, systems. Um, in other words, um, the rational man hypothesis is not only a basic assumption in economics, but also a basic assumption for studying various other human behaviors. Third goal. In part four, to repeat what I've said already, um, the economic man hypothesis has been introduced into many other fields and resulting in different schools. From the perspective of evolutionary economics, criticism can be summed up in three aspects. Um, well, the first is the negation of the view that human behavior is motivated by egoism. Second, um, secondly, the economic man hypothesis minimizes the exploitative um, nature of capitalist society. Um, thirdly, the hypothesis could lead to wrong guidance of human nature and loss of morality. From the perspective, um, eh? from the perspective of sociology, in modern society, um, individuals have different values, thus benefits are no longer their only pursuits due to the constraints of morality and systems, we find more sacrifices of our own interests to help others. And from the perspective of economics of happiness, and the ultimate goal of human behavior is for human happiness. They believe that human self happiness is also a scarce resource, not simply a manifestation of economic benefits. In this sense, the selfish behavior of human beings in pursuit of happiness do not conflict with the altruistic behavior of happiness. Therefore, the economic man is not only selfish, but also altruistic. Well, in addition, unlike the 
completely rational economic than in traditional economics. In reality, because everyone's ability to obtain information is not the same, no one can fully grasp all the uh, all grasp um, all the knowledge. Nor can they know in advance um, what knowledge is needed to complete their uh, actions. Um, therefore. There is no perfectly rational behavior in the uh, economic activities. People can achieve the optimal choice, so they will rather choose the second best, or the kind of choice that, mo that most satisfies themselves. With the development of happiness economics and the quantifiable problem about happiness has been solved. We can clearly indicate whether people are happy and the factors that really make them happy are the obstacles to unhappiness. And so that the utility of happiness can be taken into account in the field of rationality. In conclusion, I would like to say that while criticizing and revising the hypothesis of rationalism, it's suggested to be aware that the hypothesis of rationalism is still a common origin of human behavior in economic analysis, without which the research and studies in related fields are nearly impossible. Well, thank you for your listening. And if there are any questions, please feel free to ask. <laughs>